Welcome back to Ask the Linwood Cop. I'm Teresa Whipple, and uh, we are proud to have Officer Mark Brinkman back. Welcome. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, Glad we're going to talk. Yep, we're going to talk about um, some more follow-up related to impaired driving, and in particular, uh, the topic of combining alcohol and cannabis products. Right. Right. Yeah, the cannabis is, as most people know, being legal in Washington State now, is the use of cannabis has skyrocketed, and the mm -hmm. types of uh, the different ways you can consume cannabis is ever changing and the product is marketed in different ways. So more and more people are, are using it. And we're finding that cannabis, it's kind of, we call it the ranch dressing of drugs. It goes with everything, right? Oh, nice. So if you smoke heroin or use heroin, you use cannabis. If you do meth, you do cannabis. If you drink alcohol, you do cannabis. It just goes with everything. Okay. And so we're finding is specifically DUI uh, impaired drivers are impaired by alcohol also many times if not most of the time now we're finding have cannabis on board and what happens a lot of people don't realize it but actually the impairment level increases greatly when you combine those two categories of drugs alcohol being the depressant and cannabis so alcohol being a what we call a vasodilator it dilates your blood vessels and so the molecules of cannabis have to get in the bloodstream into your brain like any other drug in order to have an effect on you. So when you drink alcohol, it goes into your stomach, correct? And the vessels, the blood vessels near your lungs and stomach then tend to dilate. You smoke marijuana generally or eat it, and then it diffuses quickly into the bloodstream that's now dilated and gets to your brain much quicker. So the impairment is, is much greater than if you were just drinking alcohol or just doing cannabis. And people that use cannabis have, they know the term called um, a green out where they actually had ingest too much marijuana or cannabis and with alcohol and too much alcohol and it can actually cause them to black out um, while they're ingesting both those drugs so that's kind of and also I know uh, Sergeant Harris just got in talking about um, pedestrian safety yeah. also finding that and he might have mentioned this but that many when someone dies in a uh, vehicle or pedestrian accident and the pedestrian many times a toxicology report is done on the deceased pedestrian yeah. and more and more oftentimes we're finding that that pedestrian also will have cannabis in their system right. which affects their ability to judge should I cross the street and I can make it across and of course then if they're distracted also with the cell phone at the same time that it's quite also a combination. Doubles the danger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as a drug recognition expert, and we talked about that in an earlier segment, that's what you've been trained to do. It's something that you're seeing more and more, and Correct. specifically as a result of the legalization of cannabis over the last several years and increasing combinations of that with other things. Correct. Yeah, we're finding a lot more drivers impaired by cannabis just in general. Yeah. Too. So because it's legal, more people are using it. And... Uh, Cannabis impairments, it's a little bit different type of impairment. It's not so much as a physical impairment as a psychological, where people will tend to be able to do things like walk a straight line or maybe stand on one leg, but they'll forget instructions. Right. And so it impairs their judgment. They're at a stoplight, you know, as it might turn to go, or a stop sign, four way intersection, as it might turn to go, because their, their ability to process things and form a judgment is, is impaired as opposed to their physical ability to do things. Got it. Okay. Well, and of course, the advice you would have for people, obviously, is to, of course, not drive impaired in the first place, but certainly not to combine products to make it even worse, right? Correct. And cannabis products in general, or even drinking, but cannabis products in general, if they're consumed legally, recreationally, you know, it should just be done at home, in right. your home setting. Right. Yeah. And if you're going to do anything and, and need to go somewhere, have a designated driver or take a cab or an Uber. Correct. Right. Okay. Very good. Anything we missed? I don't think so. Okay. Thanks for coming back, and we appreciate the information. Thank you. We'll be back soon with another episode of Ask the Limit Cop.